Hello well, guys, I wanted to make a little video here talking about a helpful tip that I discovered recently. Um, laying out road courses, you run into a lot of challenges you don't run into on oval tracks, but um, you can run into some of these issues on some of the uh, oval tracks as well. Main thing I want to focus on is turn one at Watkins Glen. Now this is a track that I've laid out, um, but you know, right clicking, adding segments, how you would normally lay out a track to, be, to begin with. Uh, I've laid out Watkins Glen at least 50 to 75 times. Uh, this is the current folder that I'm working in. Uh, I've got PTFs dating all the way back to 2014. Trying to get something laid out that I was satisfied with that wasn't going to have issues. Now I want to talk about a couple of those issues. You need to be able to move the outer X section uh, 300 meters away from the racing surface on an oval track that's fairly simple to do because obviously it's basically a circle and you can just make a large circle around your racing surface circle. On a road course you're not going to be able to do that but you've kind of got to get the bulk of the outer X section 300 meters away. Um, what that does is it increases the size of the skybox which increases the drawing distance which hopefully will eliminate any drawing issues you have um, won't always do that, but that's something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, turn 1 at Watkins Glen, I'll go ahead and zoom over here to it. And you can see how I've got this one laid out. The pink line is the center line, and the two red lines are the inner and outer uh, X sections. Um, Papyrus even struggled with this. Uh, if you make the center line follow the racing surface or the racing line, what ends up happening is the inside of that segment, the corner segments, end up not being able to be driven on, which is very important because obviously this is the exit of pit road right here. Um, your pit stall will be right here. And obviously you need to be able to drive on this to get out onto the racing surface. I've seen other people laying out Watkins Glen from scratch, you know, moving this area, which completely, you know, negates the purpose of rebuilding it from scratch, basically, because it's no longer accurate. Uh, I've struggled with it. I've laid it out to where the center line would follow the inside of pit road wall, but then you end up with a huge arc out here. You end up with curved sections right here where it should be straight. And when you end up adding uh, X sections for your racing surface, um, you know, when you have a curved F section and you put, uh, mark it as Euclidean, uh, and you put an X section next to it, it disables that Euclidean because X sections can't be Euclidean, basically. Um, so you can't have curved sections in this area, it just will not work. Um, again, you know, all of those p different PTFs, I've tried different ways to get around that and still have a drivable racing surface. I think this is probably going to be the best solution and what I did was on the start finish line um, started the center line on the inside of the racing surface and when I got to the turn one here you notice I've got straight F or straight sections segments excuse me where they need to be straight so I don't have to worry about Euclidean or anything like that I get to the curved area and I'm gonna sweep that center line out towards the outside which opens this apex up and allows it to be inside of that wall over there. Now if I unlock the geometry just to show you these are straight so I can move these as far away as I want but um, you know probably do something like that. Um, zooming in on this the other thing you want to watch out for we've talked about in other tracks is you don't want to bring these all the way to that point because the track will probably crash. Uh, you'll have issues. I'm going to try, try to keep that not at a sharp angle like this or anything like that. But that's well within the wall. We're not going to have issues where you're bumping into invisible walls on the racing surface or on pit road. There will be a wall right there, so I'm not worried about that. This is really something that you can use to your advantage, especially on a road course like this. Lay out your center line following one side of the track or the other and then start sweeping that center line out so that this area gets included in the X section that is drivable. 
or the F section that's drivable. Um, now that created an issue of now my center line is on the outside of the track or the left side of the track racing surface. So you can see it follows the outside all the way around. In this particular layout, I decided to go ahead and follow the bus stop. Totally not unnecessary. I just decided to go ahead and do it. Um, still ended up with fairly low segment count at the end. But you can see I'm still on the outside or the left side of the racing surface all the way around here. At this point is when I chose to cross it back over because again, over here I have to be on the right side of the racing surface. So transition your center line through the corner and basically cross it from one side of the track to the other. When I go ahead and add an F section in here, I'll just go ahead and add one just to show you. I can line it up there. I can line it up there. And I can split the segment and get it perfectly lined up throughout there. But that's one way of solving that issue of being able to get the racing surface where you need to be able to have the racing surface. Um, is, is cross that center line from one side of the track to the other um, in large sweeping corners and then split the segments up to get it more accurate obviously. The closer you can get that racing surface the easier it's going to be to set your heights to your LiDAR data if you're choosing to do it that way. Um, you know, set your banking and stuff like that. If you can have your X sections follow the racing surface precisely without having a million segment splits to get it to curve around the surface. You know, splitting this thing up into maybe one split and two splits, that would be more than sufficient to create a natural flow around that corner, even though the center line is not following that corner exactly. Um, so hopefully that demonstrates kind of a different approach or different way of doing that use your center line to cross over the racing surface while allowing the outer X sections to cover what you need to cover to be able to drive on the on the racetrack. So, uh, just another technique. I'm going to end the video there. That's all I needed to cover in this one. Thanks for watching.